Hi everybody, uh, thank you for watching on this cold Wednesday night. I'm Sarah Chiu. Uh, my program is called Basket Starfish, Our Language Core. And um, I am not going to show the normal slide because I have a lot of slides to show tonight. Uh, once again, I am showing you a, a feminine perspective from the, from the East to look at uh, languages because I don't believe that uh, languages are tree-like. I actually proposed uh, as like, uh, basket starfish and um, you will see that we share one core and then uh, every single one is actually a branch of the same core and and as far as I can see that uh, it's uh, actually uh, like a globe itself you know like a brain also so uh, I will show you uh, every single alphabet they are in their position because of a reason I have talked briefly about A and K and I have been taking uh, many weeks to talk about H the airy sound of H and the H sound which is linked together to a thread and which actually extended to become uh, the mother thread, the umbilical cord. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, the extension of this umbilical cord, which is the vacuum itself, which, you know, actually share a lot with the uh, ancient view of the cosmos. So uh, I'm going to start the slide today. Mm. Okay. Okay, that's it. Yeah, uh, before I continue, you know, I need to show you this phrase, you know, it says the downfall of women was a precondition of the rise of men across the decades. And you can find this from this uh, very good book, Christ, actually from James Carroll. And um, which is true, you know, the more I look at the development of languages and words, the more I see that a lot of the female power has been stolen, hidden and transferred. And uh, it seems that at the very beginning, there was a time that we actually lived in in a very uh, equal society but then gradually it changed you know uh, the balance change and now become a very patriarchal hierarchical world that's why I try to promote this basket starfish paradigm so you uh, don't look at people with hierarchy because we all are standing on equal ground with the same core okay so as I said today I'm going to talk a little bit about the emptiness what is this emptiness but the female cavity the womb itself and again, you know, because of the H sound, I told you H sound, the very guttural H. And I want to show you this English word, of course, in English now, because of confusion and transcription. And you will call, uh, pronounce it as Korean, right? So um, it is actually came from the Greek word Korean. If you pronounce it uh, from the Greek way, and it is uh, actually linked very closely uh, to threads, okay? And But if you look at the biologic, uh, biology dictionary, it will explain to you it is the membrane surrounding the fetus. And I will show you some pictures, you will see that it is actually the extension and part of the umbilical cord, you know, still the thread, okay? And first of all, I want to remind you of the hieroglyphic H, H, sound, guttural H, the Chinese Hai sound, and then the Greek H, okay? And, and all this actually is, in, uh, you see this part is actually coming from the trailing movement right there. And then, of course, you know, talking about the emptiness and the extension of the umbilical cord, it actually forms the, uh, the, the sac that holds the baby. And of course, you know, you can, that's why, you know, you will see this how husk hole and hole where the baby stays you know this is an empty space we actually worship a lot of the empty space you know not the solid penis of the male okay and but then of course you know this too uh, as I uh, talk uh, weeks ago you know about the difference between the light H, you know, which came as three lines since the Ugaritic time and also the same in Chinese and it is the airy movement and actually you can also share it with the, uh, I write it in different color and, and smaller, um, uh, small writing and show the same word because it actually linked to the haze, you know, which is air itself, which is in Cantonese, it's still pronounced as Hey, a very light H and still pronounced as Hawa in Arabic. So this air is still exists in uh, very strongly in our languages. So you can see that the 
H, got to H and the H in a human concept, sometimes it just flip between the two ideas. You can understand it as the threat and because of the female cavity, it is part of it, it actually also become um, the, the threat, okay? And again, you know, I want to show you this. Again, this is the uh, also a confusion of that. Look at this ch, and in English, always pronounced as a k sound, and it become this court, uh, the the court and the court. We use it uh, differently visually to distinguish what kind of strain or threat it is, right? But then at the very beginning, this h sound actually came from this. You know, this is uh, proto sinaitic and also ancient Hebrew h finally become your h. You know the capital H, okay? And you can also understand as the twisting of the DNA and the, the trolling movement of making a, a thread, a hank, H-A-N-K, hank, okay? In English, still preserved there. And I want to show you the chicken egg. And you can see very clearly this in biology, you will see that as chalesa. And you will see very clearly this is the umbilical cord of the egg yolk, okay? And then as the egg uh, becomes uh, bigger, more developed, you know, this, uh, the word came out is Korean okay and of course in English you still pronounce it as Korean and it has actually become this sac which links to the blood vessels that feed the chicken itself but how about when it comes to um, human being I will show you the picture of a human being and you see this is a very direct uh, word of the Korean or the Korean um, you, you can see that this is the umbilical cord the whole Korean this sac this membrane itself is a continuation and extension of this cord that's why the he sound actually continue uh, since ancient time uh, we don't see a lot of birth or death or whatever because we don't live in uh, agricultural society we don't hurt anymore but if you live with them you live with the farmer live with the uh, uh, shepherds you actually see the birth you know quite often and in the olden days you know um, even when I lived in in a less developed part of the world and you will see a lot of uh, babies uh, coming out you know almost every single day because uh, the fertility is still very much worship the more people you have the more powerful your tribe is so this is something very important so I bring you to the image of this her sound and of course you know um, when this uh, cord extended to this empty sack you can understand it as the hull, the husk, the hold and the hole okay everything is as empty that actually a baby a life can go in and and, and came out from it okay and um, again, this is the metaphysical have emptiness that the ancient actually understood it much better than our modern men. And um, I travel from place to place. You know, this is something that I actually see in uh, quite a number of places. Um, this picture is from Malta that I took from the uh, uh, internet. And um, I have also seen that in Yemen and in, in a few places in the very remote part in the Middle East. Sometimes they dig uh, the out, uh, they actually empty out big pieces of boulder and inside sometimes they store grain or sometimes they use this to, to store water and um, the way you know you, you look at it as if you look at the ancient hieroglyph either the female vulva and actually the water tank is uh, has a pronunciation of hum okay the Chinese also have this writing is actually hum hum for us is also any pot any pit any hole right there and of course I, I have also set a uh, few weeks ago that hum, hamu is also has a lot to do with uh, fertility with to do with pregnancy also and um, um, in Chinese this is a writing now we also pronounce it as hum or um and this is a niche a shine you know where people uh, go to worship sometimes it also means other than a, a hole underground it also means a niche uh, a cave you know in the mountain so uh, all in all you know it, when you see the reality you will understand it so uh, when we read books you know sometimes it's very difficult to convey the meaning you have to live through all these languages and again, the Chinese have this word as hao. Hao for us is uh, the, the unit of a well and the spring and also uh, the mouth and the exit. And um, in Arabic, this word hao, how does what uh, this is like, you know, uh, what are the, uh, it's like a system, you know, that you put food or water in and this is what they call hao. And 
of course, the same somehow will be the empty uh, space, you know, of, 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 of some kind of a body, like a ship, the, the hull of a ship, and you will understand that it is the actual emptiness again. And then in German, this crazy is also, you know, an empty case, you know, a casing. And no wonder, you know, if you look at, if you're orthodox, you know, whenever you look at those um, uh, picture icons about uh, the uh, nativity, you will always we see that you know Mary somehow you know lies in uh, some kind of a worm like thing with Jesus sits uh, right next there inside a house okay and um, of course you know uh, extension of the word the sound actually uh, go from language to language so that's why I keep saying that we share one core the German Huisi actually have uh, something very similar to the Cantonese Hui you can see that we still have that uh, that uh, libation dish right there. Hoi for us is the very, very beginning of the cosmos. We say it hoi or we say it hong. It actually means emptiness. And of course, in um, uh, Hebrew, you have this home. Where you find this home is in Genesis 1.2, okay? Uh, now the earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. This deep word is actually come from the uh, 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 Hebrew word home right there and this deep deep uh, emptiness space sometimes it's described as um, you know filled with water sometimes it's just emptiness but you can see that you know uh, it says the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of water in this case you know it actually tells you that this deep is actually filled with water right there so I want to show you one very interesting thing if you recognize it from the internet this is what they call the sarcophagus of Khufu of course you know this is the 14th ancient Egyptian uh, pharaoh and you see Hufu is still you know claiming of course you know the Hu the Hu sang He sang is very very important as, as as in any other cases you know this is also the ancient link you know and uh, but then um, you have to understand through whose lenses are we understand all this history because all the historian all the Egyptologists most were led by the by uh, a lot of uh, male scholars you know in since you know about you know 100 to 100 years ago, 150 years ago, and then they keep telling you that this is the, inside the pyramid itself, you know, in the center of it, this room right there, this is the sec uh, sacrifice of uh, Hufu. But then uh, it's, it's interesting that they didn't find anything and not even a lid, you know. So if you insist that um, uh, the, um, the passage inside the pyramid was so so uh, narrow so how would the tomb rubbers you know rob the place of the the, the 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 top the cover the lid and where has it gone there is no so maybe there was no lid and they called it the king's chamber by the naming the place they already give you you know which direction to think you know uh, how about if I propose that it isn't actually a king's chamber it it, it was actually just you know an empty system that the ancient actually used to worship this is like a female worm this is the ancient deep that the Bible was talking about maybe it is much much older than they expected it to be and as a lot of the argument was still talking about you know the uh, pyramids were uh, a, a lot older than they thought they were so this is just a proposal and I just want you to think things twice um, over you know to 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 see who is presenting you the, 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 the opinion, the view, okay? So again, you know, take attention to this uh, metaphysic emptiness the ancient understood that we lost, con we lost contact of, okay? So in the very early uh, thing, uh, time, you know, I guess we have a very, very uh, um, a much more equal society because in the Chinese you will see that it's uh, like a dualism. Everything is dual with male and female part, not just the male. Okay, God is never, never just a male. That's why even in the Bible, you know, God always presents this as Elohim. It is a plural form. Okay, so why is it that it's only male that they want to tell you? So this is Chinese of of course it says that one is the male one is the female and the interesting part is that they always prefer to the dark part or the mysterious part as the female but it, uh, one thing you have to pay attention the male is always going down the female is actually going up okay so 
Um, this is exactly like uh, when the uh, Greek was telling you that at the beginning of the world is made, uh, is from chaos, right? Again, you pronounce it as chaos, uh, but if you pronounce it like a Greek, um, sorry, all the Greek, I might not pronounce it as good as you are, but I'm just giving people an idea, okay? So as chaos, okay? So a uh, chaos, you know, as you can see, you you can actually understand a lot of the understand a lot of the symbol. They were moving symbols, you know. They are not that symbols. So so uh, it's the same way that the Chinese understood it as the same way. Um, it's, this, it's just the churning, the movement, the circular movement that actually create a lot of things, you know, our existence. And uh, also if you look at even the Arabic writing, you will understand it as the eye of the... Um, of a, of a typhoon or a hurricane, okay? You can actually understand it as that way. This is actually the, 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 the writing Ain in, in Arabic. And Ain itself as also means the eye, you know, the center. And I will show you uh, also the spring on the and the fountain. And the Chinese actually uh, draw uh, an eye. And uh, in Cantonese, we still pro uh, conserve the pronunciation of an. Okay, it is a nasal sound, and then an. Okay, and it also exactly means the same: the eye, the hole, the spring, the well. And then uh, in ancient Hebrew, this is I. I, okay, and then as time went by, it actually become a very clear pubic triangle right there. You can look at it as a Y, whatever you you, you prefer, but uh, the pronunciation is more separate. Like is instead of ein become ein okay it is lengthen lengthen okay so uh for them you know they also use it for deep uh, death something mysterious also they mean a deep valley of course you know this is what they always refer to a real valley and also the female part of the body and also this is a word that always use you know to mean the people the flock like ein i'm actually in um in Hebrew actually means the people, the frog, so it's, it is the herd, okay? So the Chinese actually seems to break this two, two sound up, or the Hebrew actually combines the two sound one way or the other. This is yam, as you see the triangle, the pubic triangle turned upside down. You know, we said we understood that's the mountain, but anyway, this is the valley where the water flows, okay? And we pronounce it as yam or yin, and then it's always referred to the female, the vulva, the darkness, something mysterious, okay? And we have also in Cantonese an, a, another pronunciation as arm, as same as this I'm also uh, means people and flock, okay? It's always to do with motherhood. So as you can see, at the early time, you know, people always believe in the two uh, contrasting power. So it's always about the power balance. It's not just the, the patriarchal society, the, the macho world, as we understand now, okay? So um, I again, I want to talk a little bit more about the cover up and the transfer and I use again this uh, Hebrew uh, symbol or the the I the, the Arabic I and the Hebrew Ain okay so if you look up the uh, the the Bible biblical dictionaries you know whenever you see this at a certain time it always means the eye that bring the fountain the female and interesting enough this is this female word in Taiwan in their dialect they still have a pronunciation called ai ai is also actually uh, the mother the motherhood you know it's very very similar to the uh, Hebrew pronunciation these you cannot find find them in the dictionary they are verbally transferred from generation to generation in the dialect okay and then but the the um, dictionary were always written by men uh, remember that okay so uh, again this yam and yin I mean in the female and again, this yin, uh, uh, ayin, ayin, always used to mean babies, uh, perpetuity and flow and also continuous. Of course, this is to do with fertility. Or it actually means up high supreme. This is a very, very important thing. You will see that gradually this uh, alphabet itself will be vilified and, and, and become something evil, you know, but they cannot rub, uh, erase all the early positive meaning though. Um, I will show you gradually how 
how it changed. And then until a man becomes, you know, took over. This is Amran. If you know the Bible, Amran actually is, uh, means, you know, the kindred, the descendant of the Most High. This again, you know, uh, claim lineage to the God. And, and who is this? This is the father of Moses. Again, you know, the man actually took over this very female writing. I'm in, it means the, the people, the flock. This is, has to be someone that has ability to give birth, you know. But, you know, this is a man that took this over. And then um, this is, uh, as I said, a stolen female word. And then because the arm right here is the Hebrew and the Chinese, the Cantonese still preserve this arm um, right there also means the female, the motherhood and, and everything still preserved in our culture verbally. OK, so uh, again, you know, other than this arm and the 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 the, the um, pubic triangle right there. There's something also very in, important that I have talked about before that all of a sudden God changed Sarah's name to Sarai's name to Sarah and a threat is forcefully put there to mark that lineage to God uh, and as I said you know the, the Hebrews, uh, the Jewish people were matrilineal so this is very important that the line was with the, the, the female and that uh, also coincides with all this Chinese writing you will see that uh, these are all the writing for also behind follower and also the descendant and uh, we actually draw them out okay and again Abraham also have an edge uh, forcefully put there and then you know the up right there begin to you, now you from this I and you begin to pay attention to the A okay again I want to show you something is also stolen from it and um, if you see this up right there from the very beginning Sumerian up is actually a cow a female not a male okay so this word actually gradually changed you know and it was taken over by Av and then alf it becomes a proto-sinitic the bull you know from the female it changed to the male okay and of course you know from this it become phoenician it become the greek alpha and then to, to the other direction it become the hebrew aleph you know so this is actually stolen from this alf you know the cow from there and then um and it's being hidden and from then on the female is being hidden even though we uh, maintain the r sound but we can no longer written as the capital A. Uh, as you can see, even the Spanish uh, maintain the A as the female uh, article, and, and whatever ends with an A will be a female uh, entity. So you will see that we maintain the sound, but the A with the writing itself, this aggressive bull horn is actually uh, taken over by the men, monopolized by men themselves. Okay, so um, I will show you another example. This are, are you know, still uh, used, you know to mean the cow and then um, in, in in even in some um, Indian language it, it still means the cow and ow also means the cow but in Abu if you look at the Chinese dictionary it is father but interestingly if you go to a di dialect you go to a small villages in China Abu actually still means mother so you know the dictionary is actually work against you know uh, the, the the normal trend of the people so a lot of what's going on in the real world is never recorded in the met in the patriarchal dictionary okay this is the point I want to make and then back to the Hebrew the Jewish world and then you will see that gradually you know a lot of the a word were the, the uh, in Hebrew in the Bible will always mean ability vigor power wealth you know all this good uh, quality transfer from the female to the male and uh, I will show you I will compare two words so you will see it very very clearly you see these two words in Hebrew they spells are uh, very very similar except the beginning uh, symbol this one is the the pubic triangle this one came from the bull from the bull itself and and they actually pronounce very similar one is o the other is ow this is where your aurora or aura comes from you know the morning the sun okay and but you look at the uh, hebrew dictionary uh, this one actually means blind evil crooked dense dark you know all the female quantity quality that they always refer because of this pubic triangle and then this a you know if you look 
look at the biblical dictionary it always means luminous bright powerful mighty and that's what gradually the other aurora the morning comes from and but then interestingly if you pay attention the Greeks still have the aurora as the female goddess okay so uh, they can never really hide everything and and um, this is the example I give you to see how uh, female were being vilified okay and then of course you know you will see that whenever uh, God appears it will always uh, be look like a a bull, you know, a horn bull, and it's always become the male, the owl, you know, the, the Elohim, and, and of course, you know, the female is hidden in this little uh, yacht there, if you go to the Hebrew, but I will not talk about this, you know, it, it, it needs to be explained, okay, but I will show you, you know, in the other direction, after the Greek, the Roman, the A becomes so powerful, this bull, you know, other than leading the, the alphabetic uh, cycle, it also means all this acro apex archi 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 you know aggressive you know all this a become very very macho word okay so but i want to remind you that even in egypt that was not a bull that was a cow okay everything that was worshipped was a cow and then this owl right there in chinese still means the cow okay and owl in in the chemistry it still means gold that's why they try to tell you that it's the golden calf but then if you look at it uh there's a still a lot of bramnan you still call the, the the young cow a hiver this thread is still with the cow right there okay and then the calf is gradually formed you know because they took this uh calf from the hieroglyph you know which is the soul um, but by looking at it you will never know that it's a male or female cow but then they actually transfer it tell it keep telling you that it's a bull from the alpha olive and it finally become your present a okay and okay I think uh, I will stop right here now um, okay okay um, yeah I think that's enough for today I actually have a lot more slides but uh, I hope I can get some point across and thank you for tuning in in this very very cold day I wish that you learn to think twice you know not everything is just one uh, single sided and I wish that we can get back to the equal society as it used to be okay so thank you